What is up everybody, it is Aug here, back with another video, and in today's video, we're gonna be jumping back into ZF at level 42. But instead of 42, we're actually gonna be going at 40. So I got up my mage recently on the EU realm, I'm gonna be going for gold cap, and we did this all on Twitch yesterday, so definitely check out the Twitch, link down below. But we found a way to actually go through ZF completely safely, as low as level 40, as soon as you have a mount, and potentially even without a mount, but I would at least wait till 40 and hopefully have a mount as well. Now, the way that we do this is by using a special trick and a use of consumables that I'm going to be going over in just a second. But this is going to be game changing because this is going to allow you to get into these instances a lot earlier and run through all these. A lot of you may know about my ZF level 42 to 52 video before, but it's actually 42 to 54. I recommend this farm from at least level 40 now until 54 as the best possible way to level up a mage solo. So if you guys haven't checked out the video and you want to see the first iteration, I will link that down below as well. And you guys can check that out. But in this video, we're going to be focusing with how to do this at level 40. Now I did this from 41 until 45 earlier, and I never died while running to the graveyard. Most people, the massive issue that they have, especially as a troll, is running to the graveyard because they're not able to reset on the reset spots or get to the reset spots because they die. Maybe their defense level is too low. And that's what I'm going to be including in here. Literally not a problem at all. The lowest we got down to was like 30% health or something like that running to the graveyard. It was absolutely incredible. And this strat is going to be fantastic to help you guys level up as fast as possible and not need to worry about resetting on the graveyards. So we're going to start off first with the actual run itself. I'm going to be showing you guys the trick of how exactly we do it. I'm going to walk through the run itself. After that, we're going to have a really easy way to get up your defense level. For this farm, you're going to want to be having a decent defense level because defense is going to play key when you get hit along the way to the GUI or something like that. You don't want to have a higher chance of getting crushed and dazed and things like that. So defense is going to be key, and there's a very, very easy way to level it up. And then after that, we're going to have the talents and gear, and I promise not to accidentally leave them out of the video this time. So if you guys are enjoying this content, definitely subscribe down below. Check out the Twitch to see all this done live and ask me any questions that you guys have. Ask me any questions you also have down below, and I will try to get back to as many of them as I can. Let's jump into it. So here we are back in a fresh ZF. We could see that we are level 41 on the dot. And so we're about 41 and a half. We're going to be able to see that we get a ton of experience. But there's a special trick that we're going to use, and that is what's going to make all of this a game changer. And you're seeing me drag potions right now or use a potion right now. And then we can just run by the mobs. And so typically what we have to do at this level is that we have to kind of, you know, go through these mobs and try not to aggro them. And if we aggro them, face, make sure we're facing them so we don't get dismounted and hope that we don't get dismounted so we can get to a safe spot and things like that. And that at the lower levels is exceptionally difficult. However, I was just sitting there yesterday. And I was like, wait, there's a trick that I kind of figured out before that we could potentially use. And so that is exactly what we're doing here. So what you do is from the start, you pop a lesser invisibility potion and you run up the left side of the mountain. Then what you do is you jump over to the side behind it, mount up, go up to this hill, and we're going to use the side reset spot on the right. So we can see that we aggro a couple mobs, but we line up and we jump right over the left side of this. Now, the best way to do this, I just want to kind of hone in on that for just a second here to show you guys the best way that we could possibly jump over this is to line up perfectly with the leftmost edge of this uh, slanted thing. <laughs> Basically, you can see here that when we line up here, it goes out and then it slants down. And so jumping over the left side is going to be the easiest thing to jump over. So if you line up with just the left side, you're going to be perfectly fine getting over there every time. If you do, however, miss it, you can use the pots right next to that ledge or right next to that hill as a reset spot for the mobs. So you can jump up on that pot. And as long as you're far away from far away enough from the mobs, you can actually get them to reset. From here then, what you need to do is you need to wait about a minute until your other invisibility potion is up. So with the very first invisibility pot, we're going to use our lesser invisibility pot. We're going to scale the mountain. We're going to get up to the top. We're going to get over to this hill, and we're going to jump on this safe spot. Then, after two minutes, the other invisibility potion is going to be available. So there's a special trick where there's the lesser invisibility potion and there's the regular invisibility potion, and they actually don't share a cooldown. So you can see that when you use one invisibility potion, it puts that invisibility potion on a 10 minute cooldown, but not the other one. And it only takes about 15 seconds to get to the first spot as long as you veer straight there. So you can use the lesser invisibility potion first. And then for the second one, we're actually going to use the regular invisibility potion. 
And so here, once it's ready, obviously I'm using the lesser here just because it was the very first run and I was kind of experimenting. We run through these mobs. Again, they can't aggro onto us. We're actually able to get through this entire second pack too. And so we're nearly able to get around this entire middle room, which is one of the most difficult rooms, and not have to use any of the safe spots at all. We aggro the shadow caster here, as we can see, and we aggro the second one, but then we just veer around the side. We get hit by one shadow bolt, and that's it. Then we can jump on top of the pod or behind the pod or just run around the pot, basically. Nova, those mobs right there. I missed the Nova. That's perfectly fine. And you just run to the safe spot, and you get started with the pool. You're just slowing the mobs as you go. Keep up mana shield. Keep the vice bearer. You have full mana, so you know that as long as you have a decent enough defense level, you're not going to have any problem at all getting by these mobs. And even once I got started later on, I actually started going ahead and I was using this entire pool and then actually opening up the graves at level like 43 with this pool just getting started now, not even resetting before I open up the graves. I recommend while you're still getting used to it, definitely reset before you open up the graves. But as you can see here, it took me about two and a half to three minutes probably to be able to do this run. And then doing this run took me about another minute, probably a minute and a half. So in about four to five minutes, we're already to the reset spot. And we're already ready to get going with the actual pools themselves. Now that we get to the reset spot, you want to get a full mana and you want to get ready for your shields. Now with Ice Barrier, the special trick to make sure that you have your Ice Barrier going while you're opening up the graves is to Ice Barrier early. So that when you actually start opening up the graves, you have enough time on your Ice Barrier remaining to actually do the pool itself. And so I went into this in great detail in the other video. You're more than welcome to check it out. But what we do here is we pop Ice Barrier and then we're going to go over. We're going to activate the boss by activating the boss. The boss then opens up these, whenever we open up these graves, they automatically run to the boss. And so here, one grave gets open anytime that you interact with the boss. But now all the mobs are going to be running towards the boss, which means that they're not going to be hitting us. We're running forward and we're spamming all these graves. Now, one thing I do want to touch on is how I actually do my movement and my running. Because a lot of people are having issues with these graves, and I've started noticing it in some of my coachings. I run with W or auto run. In this case, I run with W. And then I use strafe. So for me, that's Q and E. Some people, it's A and D. I use strafe to zigzag back and forth while using my right click on my mouse to actually spam open the graves. And so here we can see once they reset, we run back the opposite path. You will aggro them at the end. And once the mobs kind of start running towards you, just go for the Nova, open up that last grave. And then either if you're a female, you can blink through the left side or blink around the right side and run around that pot and get jump up to the reset spot again. But if you're using W and the strafes, you're going to have a much easier time than if you're moving with your mouse. If you solely move with your mouse, I highly, highly recommend you rebind to QW and E for movement and you get used to moving like that, especially using auto run. What I like to do a lot of times is I like to enable auto run and then just use my right mouse button on my mouse to just shift whichever direction I need to for a slightly different angle and then just keep on going. After we do those two graves, we're ready for the final grave. And so we can see here that we're opening up the final set of graves. You have plenty of time to get back around the side of the hill and back up to the safe spot before you actually have any of the mobs come over to hit you. Don't worry about the one grave that is left by the boss, because when you actually activate the boss in just a little bit, that one grave is automatically going to be opened. As I said before, every single time you interact with the boss, one grave gets opened, causing you to be able to go through the rotation. So now we're ready to actually jump up to the top. So we jump up to the top of here. We drop combat and we jump up into the corner. If you are a troll, anything other than a gnome, sorry gnomes, you can just scale up the wall there. But if not, just mount up on your mount and then you can just scale up the wall real easily. And here I'm actually going to mount up just to do it because I can't drop combat. If there is a healing ward, you can see here, or if there's any kind of lava ward, that will keep you in combat for a decent bit. So just fire blast it, just take it out. But now you can get up the wall. So if you need to get up the wall without the mount, if you're having troubles, just go ahead and mount up and you're going to be good to go. At this point, what you want to do is you want to swap over to mage armor. So make sure you swap over to mage armor because you're going to need all the regen that you can get. Also, make sure you have dampen magic going for the boss. Make sure that you have a full ice bear and everything like that. And then we're actually going to get started with the pool. Now, some people ask why I jump behind the back of this, and you guys are going to see that in just a second. The reason why I jump behind the back is that this first group that we're going to aggro will occasionally reset if I go through the front. And I think it's more so a speed thing. So if you're really quick with getting over to the actual kill spots, don't have to worry about it. However, if you're not, then you're definitely going to want to jump over the back. One other thing I really want to point out is that dead heroes and zombies have a different aggro table. What that means is that if I were to pull all these zombies, but I didn't hit this dead hero, 
this dead hero would not be pulled. So if you want to skip the dead heroes, skip them. If not, though, what you actually want to do is you want to make sure that you hit them as well with the flame strike or you counterspell them or something, something to engage combat with them. Otherwise, that dead hero is not going to pull. He's not going to chain pull the other dead heroes, and you're going to be missing out on that experience. Same kind of thing goes with witch doctors and shadow hunters and things like that. The zombies aren't going to pull them, but the dead heroes will. So then we scale around the back. We jump over there, and I'll describe that in more detail in just a second. We go for the rank one blizzard here to pull those mobs, and then we're just going to be jumping back and forth from this platform. So you jump up here. As soon as mobs run around the side, you're going to jump back. And then once the mobs go a little bit down the side, you're going to jump back. And what this is doing is it's basically keeping all the mobs around this left side right here. And so as mobs run around the side and they get up to the top, they join in the rest of the mobs. And what you can see is that most of the mobs are pretty well stacked up. And so when we're ready for it, we go for our blizzard. Now, before we get into the actual kill phases of the blizzard, I want to talk about how to actually jump up to here with the witch doctor and things like that. So the actual pathing that we use is very, very important. And I want to kind of hone in on that because a lot of people have issues with that. And that is going to make a big, big difference in a successful versus a not successful pool. Open up with a rank one flame strike. We use a rank one flame strike because it doesn't cost much mana. It leaves the tick on the ground. So we're continue to be in combat with those mobs. And so as they run through, they're still getting hit by the ticks, keeping us in combat with them longer. And it's a very easy resource where we can reach a lot of mobs from a far distance. So it's like an AOE ability, basically. Then what we want to do is we want to immediately jump behind. Some people jump over to the right right here and they take a little bit of time. Don't take your time. Get there quickly. Jump from this corner straight forward. Then you jump over this box either on top of it or behind it. Go get into the corner. You do two jumps up and that's either going to put you on the other side or if it doesn't, then you turn your camera to the left and you strafe a little bit to the right with a jump and you'll jump over. So here we jump over quick, one, two, and then we just run off onto the side. We blink down this hallway and that makes sure that none of the mobs reset and it also makes sure that the witch doctor does reset. Sometimes if you just run down this little strip here, you're actually not gonna have the witch doctor reset. And I actually had that happen once yesterday where I was too slow getting to the spot and the witch doctor did not reset make sure that you do do that. But as I said before, you jump back and forth just to get all the mobs to kind of stack up. And once you're ready for the kill phase, once the mobs are stacked, you start blizzarding. If they do get disaggregated, don't worry about it. Just use blizzard to kind of stack those mobs back together. Now, when you're level 40 or 41, this only applies to 40 or 41, and this is why we started at 42 before, the dead heroes could be level 46. With them being level 46, that means that they could be read to you and have a very high chance of resisting your blizzard. They will still take the damage tick from Blizzard, but the Blizzard slow effect can be resisted. If it's resisted, as it just was with that Ted Hero, you just need to jump back and forth. The only time you're going to be going for two Blizzards when you are a level 40 or 41 is when you actually get all the mobs slowed. So we can see the Dead Hero didn't get slowed again, jump back. It's perfectly fine because as long as you have Mage Armor up and as long as you have some Spirit Gear, which we'll get into in just a little bit, you're going to be perfectly fine to take out all of these mobs and have plenty of mana. As you can see, every single time that we jump back, we actually gain more mana than we had before. Here, however, because it looked like all the dead heroes were slowed, I went for a max rank blizzard. Since the dead hero wasn't slowed, I probably should not have. But that's perfectly fine. Mana is not going to be the biggest issue at the end of the day as long as you have all your mana gems and you have some pots ready to go. I recommend having, you can have greater healing pots and greater mana pots. You could have superior, whichever one you want to use. It's honestly up to you. Superior, I found, were a little bit more expensive, so I didn't want to spring the extra gold for them. Maybe I'm a bit cheap. Whatever. But you need to use some kind of healing pot and mana pot just as like a last case resource, and you probably will be using the mana pots. What you also want to do is you want to use your mana gem early on into the actual kill phase so that the second mana gem is ready to go whenever you actually do want it. But from here, you basically jump back and forth the entire time trying to keep them grouped. You never want to do more than two blizzards, and you never want to blizzard half the group. You never want to blizzard when they're running back, because what that's going to do is it's going to separate the group. You can see that my group stays pretty well stacked, and all I do is just jump back and immediately position the actual blizzard in this spot over here. By positioning the blizzard in that spot, they run forward into the blizzard, they take a right turn, and then they run back all within that same blizzard, allowing them to have a really, really good chance of getting stacked up and die there or get slowed. So here again, we blizzard, they run out, they run over, they run back, all while being in that one blizzard. And you can see that one of the dead heroes even got clipped 
that late into the actual blizzard. And so you can see that it really works. In the event that you do fall when jumping back over here, it's not a problem at all. Just run up around the side. And I think I do fall once in this particular run. Run back up around the side, get back to the safe spot, and you're good to go. Once you're level 42 plus, this becomes trivial. Sometimes they're going to break through. They have like a, I think a 1% chance to resist your blizzard. There's a chance they'll run through. They're probably not going to run through. So you're probably going to be perfectly fine. But if they do run through, just treat it like this. And you're going to be perfectly fine. But here you can see that we are just trying to make sure that we account for all of the scenarios. So it's going to take a little bit longer to do the kill overall with a level 40 or a 41. However, at level 40 or 41, with the new invisibility strat, we are going to be able to fly through this, get to this spot in about five minutes, open up the graves in about three minutes, and then we can even have a seven minute kill and we're still hitting the four lockouts per hour cap. This is going to be incredible and can be done from level 40 plus. That is actually a huge game changer too because the XP and SM really starts to diminish at level 40. And so this is going to make <laughs> just, it's, it's a game changer. I'm so excited. This has been one of the most popular farms. It's one of my most favorite farms because it is just so much fun to do. And now people are going to be able to do it at a lower level. Now, as far as the actual gear that you want goes, let's talk a little bit about that. I errantly left it out of the last video and I'm very sorry. I deleted it during the editing and honestly didn't even realize before it was posted and there's no way to edit it once I post it so I couldn't get it uploaded. But you want of the eagle and of the owl gear. Of the Eagle gear is an affix to gear that gives intellect and stamina. Of the Owl gear is an affix that gives intellect and spirit. You want to have some spirit for this farm so that you're regening mana. You can see that every single time that I'm just regening mana, I'm actually regening a considerable amount, about 50 a tick. A rank 1 blizzard only costs about 250 mana. So you want to make sure that you can regen a good amount of mana. Another really important reason that you want to be able to regen a good amount of mana is that... If you do not engage these mobs for a total of about 10 seconds, so if you don't do any damage, or maybe 20 seconds, if you don't do any damage to these mobs and you just let them run back and forth, you're just jumping back and forth, regenning mana, thinking that you're doing a great job because you're at like half mana, right? When you re-engage those mobs, the XP amount that you're going to receive from those mobs is reset to their current health percentage. So if the mob only has 20% health left and you've just been bopping back and forth, you're only even get 20% of your normal experience. And so a lot of people occasionally whisper me like, is this method nerfed? Look at the XP I'm getting and they get like 150. It's because they waited so long to actually re-engage with the mobs and they weren't keeping consistent damage on them that the mobs actually kind of reset their XP tracker, if you will, and that caused the drop off on XP. So you can see here that I do fall down and we just jump over the side, run back, right back into the spot and you're good to go. So that's really something that's really important. Make sure that even if it's a rank one blizzard, every time that you go back and forth, you hit them with something. At least engage them with something so that they do not potentially have that issue happen. But you can start to see some XP come through here and you're going to see exactly how much we get. We started off at about 50% of a level. So you're going to be able to see how far we get into one level at level 41. And it's going to be about the same at level 40. Of the eagle gear is intellect and stamina. So that's the other thing you're going to want to have. Now, of the Eagle Gear is going to be a little bit less important with the invisibility strat, just because we're not going to be getting hit by as many mobs, so we're not going to need as much stamina. That being said, when you are running after the invis pot wears off, there is still a good amount of damage you could potentially take, and there were a couple close calls where I had where I probably got down to like 30%. And so maybe if I had 1,300 health instead of 1,600 or 1,700 health, might not have lived. One, nav one way you can circumvent that, get scrolls of stamina and scrolls of armor. That can get you some extra armor and some extra stamina, things like that. Those are little like things that you could do to kind of circumvent that. Get get a priest to cast uh, Power Word Fortitude on you or something like that, and that can help. But you want a combination of of the eagle and of the owl gear. That you just buy at the auction house. I'll show you my gear on this tune, but all the gear that I have is all just greens off the auction house. And that's really all you need for this. And it's amazing. So as you can see here, we almost have all the mobs down. We're just running back and forth. We wait until Evocate until we're at about 10% mana left. Because Evocate, with the amount of spirit that we have, gives back pretty much all of our mana. <laughs> like, we get up to 90% of our mana. It's, it's incredible. And so you want to make sure that you don't waste that extra kind of mana tick. And just make sure that you have Evocate at a low amount of mana. 
you can see that we went through both of our mana gems and we also went through one mana pot and now we're wanting the mobs down from here just to finish them off. So it is going to be pretty mana intensive, but I also don't have a good pair of boots on this tune. I don't have a good ring. I, I actually don't have one of the rings. I, I don't have a lot of good of the eagle gear just because on this server, there's actually not much on the auction house, including of the eagle and of the owl. So there's actually some pieces where I wasn't even able to get upgrades from just the random gear that I had found when I was getting boosted in Mara or boosted in SM or something like that. But if you're on a high populated server or anything higher than medium, you're probably going to be able to get a good amount of gear. Here you can see me use a rank one blizzard just to be able to get down those mobs and make sure that I keep them in combat so I don't lose XP. Overall, as far as the XP per hour goes, you can range anywhere between 100 and 200,000 experience per hour unrested. That's going to vary between your levels. Ultimately, as you get up to a higher level, around level 50, the XP really starts falling off because these mobs are level 43 and 44 for the majority of them. You can, however, do this farm all the way to 56 and even potentially 57, as some people have done, but I do not recommend it. I recommend using this mob farm from level 40 until level 54 and no further than that. Any further than that, and you risk the potential of just wasting a ton of time. <laughs> it is also 50 gold per hour that you're going to make. There's a bunch of greens that drop. There's a bunch of cloth. There's a lot, a lot of raw gold that you're going to be making from this farm. And so it's absolutely phenomenal. And a lot of people can attest that they've been able to go from previously 42 to 52 or 54 in hours. It's incredible. But I want to focus in and I want to show you kind of the opener one more time with the invis pots because that's the big change that we're making just so you guys can kind of hone in on exactly what to do. So here's the very next run. Now here, obviously, we can see that we got we went from 50% XP all the way to two bars remaining in the level. So we got 40% of a level from one run. It's absolutely phenomenal. But this time we're going to use lesser invisibility pot and we're going to immediately book it straight to the place where we need to be going to which is going to be this little mound on the left here. All right, so here we go. We put up our shields. We pop our lesser invisibility pot, and now we're just booking it straight for this side part. As long as you get around the side of this, by the time that your lesser invisibility pot falls off, you're safe. That's all you need to do. So we jump up, keep on scaling up the wall, and we're around the side. And you can see that we got there with about a second left. Now, if the mobs do aggro, I believe that this is also a reset spot. I don't believe that they can scale up the wall. So it should be okay, but you should be fine as long as you have minor run speed on boots. Make sure that you have minor run speed on boots. We're going to mount up, keep on running. We're going to hug the left so we don't aggro this pack of three on the right. We're going to aggro this mob in the corner just from proximity. Run over, aim for the left side, jump over, and we're at the reset spot. After waiting those two minutes, we're ready to go again. So we're going to pop our pot, immediately jump down, and start running through this pathway. And we're going to beeline straight for this rock right here. Now, since we saved our regular invisibility potion for the second potion, what ends up happening is that we're actually able to get by the shadow caster without aggroing him, and we only aggro the shadow caster. Don't silence him like I did here because you're going to line of sight his shadow bolt, but then run around the side. You're going to jump either behind the pot or in front of the pot. You're going to go for a Nova on these two mobs. And you can see here that we're still at 84% health, and we're pretty safe, and we're level 41. You will be aggroing mobs as you go, and if you get a couple of Shadow Hunters, they could definitely do some damage. But the name of the game is just to keep on running. If you need to use Cold Snap, use Cold Snap, but you're going to be able to get to that reset spot very quickly just by running through those mobs. Thekka could be a little bit of a pain just because he is a higher level, so he's level 46. So potentially you could take a little bit more damage from him, and he potentially could resist your slow. Just say blink for him maybe, and you should be perfectly fine. This is another reset spot too on the other side if you want to jump up on this, get the mobs reset, and get started with your runs. So a lot of people are going to get boosted to get up to this level right now, to level 40 or whatever, maybe 42 if you want to start at 42. And so they're going to find issues where their defense level is too low. And so if your defense level is too low, you're nearly always guaranteed to get crit. Well, you get crushed, but it's going to be the same effect as a crit. And then you're also going to get dismounted and dazed and things like that. And so you want to make sure you get up your defense level. Now, an easy way to get up your defense level is to go into stockades or go into RFC or even dead mines and go and have mobs hit you like this. And so here you can see that I just have three mobs hitting me and I'm just constantly keeping up my shields. So this is a great method to do it, but there's also an even better method to really, really fly through those levels. And so that is this right here. 
And what we're doing is we actually aggro up a crap ton of mobs. And so this is just basically our normal like RFC speed clear pool. And you technically can kill all these mobs too if you wanted to. But we bring them up and then we ice block. And actually, when you're in ice block, you actually gain all these defense levels. And so you can see, even though we're nearly max defense, we're still getting a ton of defense levels while on this ice block. Then you cold snap and you ice block again. And we can see that just from these mobs, I'm actually getting, you know, six defense levels so far. So this is a very, very, very quick way to get up your defense level. And if you were level like 90 defense, you would probably get up to, I would say probably like 130 defense just from two blocks. And then you can step away and you can blizzard them down and reset and do it again in 10 minutes if you wanted to, or if you want to just do three mobs or whatever from there. But this shows a very, very easy way to get up your defense level, which is really going to help when you get started with the actual ZF pools themselves. So here we could see that my mage is 45 and a half, and these are the actual talents that I use. So the first thing that you want to go through is you want to go down the frost tree. You want to get all the important things, but you want to skip over Frostbolt, you want to skip over Frostbite, you want to skip over Shatter, actually, and you want to skip over Winter's Chill. In fact, I recommend actually only going four points into Ice Shards. Now, the reason I recommend only going four points into Ice Shards is because that will allow you to work down to clear casting faster. And you don't really need Ice Shards because you're not going to be doing much single target damage unless there's like one mop left. So here is the actual spec that I recommend. I will have this link down below so you guys can copy it. And this is going to be exactly what you want to do. From here, what you want to do is you want to fill in three in Arcane Focus and then work your way through Arcane Concentration. At that point, you'll be level 50, improved armor just so you can run through the mobs easier. From there, it's completely up to you. If you want to get ready for other farms, Magic Absorption, maybe a Wand, if you just want to wand down some mobs, whatever you're feeling. But this is going to be what you're going to want to run at level 42. Now, as far as the gear goes, as I said, of the Eagle and of the Owl gear. So if we look through here, Everything that I'm using is of the Eagle or of the Owl. That's going to give me maximum stamina, and it's also going to give me intellect, and it's also going to give me spirit as well. So here, we're able to get a good amount of intellect and spirit, which is going to allow us to be able to get off those big evocates. And so if we look at my actual MP5, we can see that MP5 while casting is 110 from spirit, which means that I'm getting a lot of mana back while casting. So that is what makes all of this possible. Copy this gear, copy this talent tree, bring all the consumables, and you're going to be good to go. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live, and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.